Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to Kids Life Online. If you don't know me, my name is Corinne, and I'm so excited you're joining us. Today, we're going to continue our series called I Know It Sounds Crazy, But It's True. And I can't wait to learn today's crazy story about you guys. Before we get started, I have a question for you guys, though. Have you ever been asked to do something that made no sense at all? Maybe it was by your parents or by your teacher, but they asked you to do something that made no sense to you whatsoever. You were like, why do I have to do this? This doesn't make sense. Or why did this happen, right? It's a lot of things that don't make sense, but there's always a reason for it. Well, it's one thing when our parents or our teacher asks us to do something that doesn't make sense to us, but it's another thing when God asks us to do something that doesn't make sense. Today, we're learning a crazy story about a man who was asked to do some crazy stuff by God. First, I want you to watch this video and we're going to learn all about it. So let's turn our attention to the intro video. Welcome back everyone to another exciting edition of I Know It Sounds Crazy, But It's True. My name's Josh, and like always, if it's weird, if it's wacky, if it's bizarre, and it's in the Bible, we're gonna talk about it. I'm ready to go. What about you guys? Let's kick the tires and light the fires. I am overjoyed. It's party time. I haven't been paying attention, but <laughs> whatever. Let's just get this over with. Now in today's lesson, we're talking about a judge. Order in the court. I'll have a cheeseburger. No, not that kind of judge. We're talking about the book of judges, you know, in the Bible. That makes more sense. Now you may have heard of some of these judges before, like uh -oh. Samson. You know, the big strong guy that hated haircuts. I hope you brought your sewing kit cause I'm ripped. Something like that. The judges were men and women that God picked to lead the Israelites during tough times. Every judge was really brave. Ah, look at me so brave. Except for one, Gideon. Gideon was a huge scaredy cat. What was that? Can I have it? No, he wasn't a cat person. Well, that's boring. But he was afraid. In fact, when we first meet Gideon, he's hiding. But an angel of the Lord shows up and says to him, Greetings, mighty warrior. To which Gideon replied, This guy, a mighty warrior, Seriously? If he's a mighty warrior, I'm a giant rooster. That can be arranged. Quiet, you. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. The Israelites were under control of an evil empire called the Midianites. And God chose Gideon, the scaredy cat, to lead the Israelites against them. That don't make no sense. And it didn't make sense to Gideon either. So Gideon asked the angel for a sign to prove that he was really from God. <laughs> like this one. Hello, I am from God. <laughs> now it's a bit weirder than that. First, the angel made fire come out of a rock. Fire is my favorite! Fire from a rock is pretty cool, but it wasn't enough for Gideon the scaredy cat. So we got a fleece, you know, sheep's wool. Laid it on the ground and told the angel that if the next day the ground was dry, but the sheep's wool was wet, then he would believe. Well, the next morning, it happened. And hallelujah, Gideon finally believed. Uh, no. Oh, come on, get with the program, you yellow belly. Calm down. The next day, Gideon asked for the opposite to happen. He wanted the ground to be wet and the fleece to be dry. And the next morning, it was. This is the weirdest, most random story I've ever heard. I like it. <laughs> as weird as it was, it was finally enough proof for Gideon. So the angel told Gideon to gather up an army and go to battle against the Midianites. Battle! But what do you think happens next? Is Gideon gonna chicken out? Will he stop being scared? Will he trust God even though it doesn't make sense? Find out today in your lesson. You know what time it is. <laughs> oh no you don't. Last time you turned me into a dinosaur. I won't this time. Do you promise? Why certainly. Why do I suddenly want corn? That's messed up. Wow, Gideon sure didn't seem like much of a mighty warrior, did he? 
And what in the world is with all of those crazy tests with the fleeces? It's clear that Gideon didn't trust these crazy orders that are really the best plan, right? How would you ha handle it if God told you to do the same things he told Gideon? It's crazy, right? Something It didn't make sense to Gideon, but God had a plan and a purpose, right? We had to trust that. Well, we are going to learn all about what happened to Gideon's story. And if you think it has been crazy so far, you ain't seen nothing yet. But right now, we need to go check in with our friend, Disco Dave. And he is going to teach you your what you got to know. So let's all stand up and we're going to learn it together. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about obeying God even when it don't make sense. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, I don't get it, that's okay, I'm gonna obey anyway. Sometimes God asks us to do some far out stuff. It just don't make sense. But we gotta obey God anyway. Disco Dave, I need you to trust me. For sure, God. I'll trust you no matter what. And that's what you should do too. Trust and obey God even when it don't make sense. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, I don't get it. That's okay. I'm gonna obey anyway. That right there is what you gotta know. I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino-mite! Far out. What you gotta know. Lady 
ladybugs to stop the aphids from destroying your grandma's flowers. Oh, I get it, no doubt here. You got it, civilian. Now we best be on our way before all of my grandmother's roses are destroyed. Good day to you all. Bye, Major. I hope you and your army of ladybugs get there before the aphids destroy the flowers. Attention! About faith! March! Let Far out, what you gotta know. So our crazy story today is found in the book of Judges, chapters six and seven. Where is it found? It is about a man named Gideon. Everybody say Gideon. I like to pretend you guys are interacting with me even though I'm not with you. So Gideon was a farmer, and our story begins with Gideon hiding. He was hiding because he was scared of the Midianite armies, which are the enemies of the Israelites, God's chosen people. They would come and they would invade Israelite farms, which includes Gideon's, and steal all of their crops and all their food. And so Gideon was hiding in a wine press because he was scared of the Midianite armies. And then suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Mighty warrior? Gideon's a farmer hiding in a wine press. That doesn't make any sense at all. He's not a warrior. He's a scaredy cat, right? <laughs> and Gideon's probably thinking the same thing. The angel told Gideon that God wanted him to lead the army of Israel into battle to defeat the Midianites. So the people that he is scared of right now, God calls him a warrior and says he's gonna lead God's people to defeat them. You guys think Gideon's probably going, oh, I don't know, that doesn't really make sense, right? Gideon argued for a little while, but finally decided to go ahead and answer God's call to lead his people to victory, even though it made no sense at all. Gideon put out the call for all of the fighting men of Israel to meet him so that he could put together an army to defeat the Midianites. He looked out at his army of 32,000 men and thought, maybe we can do this. Maybe we'll be all right. That's a lot of guys. He's got a good army. But then God told Gideon, you have too many men to, for me to deliver the Midianites into your hands. Too many men? I don't know about you guys, I might not know a lot about battle, but I think that there is no such thing as too many men to bring into a battle. I would think you'd want to bring as many people as you can, right? That made no sense. Gideon told all the men who were scared to go home. So he's like, if you guys are a little worried, you can just go home, it's fine. 22,000 men left. So we started with 32,000 and now he had only 10,000 left which 10,000 might seem like a lot, but compared to 32,000? All right, so thinking, all right, God's got it, I guess. Then God told him that there were still too many men. Still too many. He already got rid of so many guys, but that's still too many. So God told Gideon to let the men go down and get a drink of water. And so Gideon said, okay, told the guys, go get a drink of water. And then God said, whoever drank by scooping water with their hands could remain in the army. What? He's deciding who stays in this army. He's choosing his warriors and his battlers. What? Fighters <laughs> is what I meant. <laughs> Based on how they drink water. What on earth? That does not make any sense, right? Choosing an army based on how they drink water, but Gideon obeyed. Then it got really crazy, you ready? God told Gideon to take his 300 men, 300, that's how many were left. He had 32,000 and now he has 300. And God told him to take them and give them each a jar and a torch and a trumpet and that's it. He was sending them to battle. What do you think of when I say, if I say I was gonna send someone into battle, you're like, okay, we're gonna give them weapons and shields and all kinds of stuff, but no. He gave them a torch, a jar, and a horn, a trumpet. What? 
So he instructed Gideon to have his men surround the camp of the Midianites and hold up their jars and candles and blow their trumpets. What a crazy battle plan. That's it. That's the whole plan. That's the battle plan. But Gideon obeyed, even though it probably didn't make sense to him. He probably was thinking, oh my goodness, this is crazy. But he obeyed. Gideon and the men reached the edge of the camp, blew their trumpets, broke their jars that were in their hands, and the Midianites woke up from their sleep and were so confused by the lights and the sounds surrounding their camp that they started to fight each other. What? They got, they woke up so confused that they started to fight each other and they ended up defeating themselves. Isn't that crazy? Gideon and his men didn't have to fight anyone. They won the victory with candles, jars, and trumpets. Gideon obeyed even when it didn't make sense. Because how many of you guys know that didn't make any sense? It seemed crazy every step of the way. Gideon is a farmer who was hiding from the Midianites. He told, God told him to get guys. He got too many and he had to make men go home. Then he gave them jars, candles, and trumpets, and that was it. That's the whole plan. And they defeated them. It's crazy, and that's why in our lesson, we are learning what to do even when God doesn't make sense to us, because that happens a lot of times. We don't always understand God's plan, and it might seem weird, might even seem crazy, but we know that we must obey just like Gideon did. Far out. What you gotta know. Ooh, a little sweet. It's a salt. A little sweet. Oh! Hey, boys and girls! It's me, Terry! Terry Yaki, and I was just cooking up something tasty for my restaurant. Nice rice. It's a five star fine dining establishment that's famous for, you guessed it, my rice. Hard to mess that up. Now today I'm also cooking up a very special power verse. The trouble is, I'm famous for getting things mixed up. Eggs aren't the only thing I scramble. I mix up the ingredients, the names of our dishes, and even the power verse. So I'm going to need your help unscrambling the whole thing today. So let's look at it together. If 1415 love me, obey my John. Commandments you. Um, yes, this is wrong. Very mixed up. Kind of like the time I made an apple pie with an apple iPad. Customers complained it was too crunchy. I don't know, kind of weird. Anyway, boys and girls, I'm gonna need your help getting this one unscrambled. Let's look at it together. Hmm, if 1415 love me, what in the world are these numbers for? Oh, of course, we'll move them over for now. If blank love me, obey my John. Well, that can only mean one of two things. We're supposed to obey a talking toilet or the book of the Bible is out of place. Which do you think? Yep, I think we should move John over too. Let's try it again. If blank love me, obey my blank, commandments you. Aha, I think I found our two blanks. Let's put them in the right place. Commandments probably goes here. And you probably goes over here. So what do you think the scripture reference is? Yep, John 14, 15. Yes, that's it. I think we have it. Now stand with me and say it loud on the count of three. One, two, three. If you love me, obey my commandments. John 14, 15. That's a great power verse. Now, 
Let's make sure we really know it so when we need to remember it later, it's not all mixed up in our brains. Stand up and say it loud on the count of three. One, two, three. If you love me, obey my commandments. John 14, 15. Great job, boys and girls. Now, I've got to get back to making my spaghetti. Now, where did I put my pudding? Hmm. Well, until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, ladles up. Far out. What you gotta know. Hey kids, hope you're all sitting on the couch or the floor and you're listening with your ears. I'm excited to continue our series. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Stories from the Bible that seem crazy, but are true. They really happened. And today's story was another situation that was crazy. So do you remember our Bible story that you just heard today? God brought the victory to Gideon, even though nothing he told Gideon made any sense at all. And you know what? There are a couple lessons that I think that we can learn from this awesome Bible story on what to do when God doesn't make sense, because it's gonna happen. God's gonna ask you to do things sometimes that you're like, what, what do you ask me to do? That makes no sense at all. And we don't always handle it in the right way when God tells us to do something that doesn't make sense to us. So when God doesn't make sense, a lot of times we say, God, are you sure you can use me? So I want you to say that with me, just like I said it. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. I say, God, are you sure you can use me? Remember when God told Gideon to lead his army? Gideon argued with him. A lot of people argue with God in the Bible. And he said, Lord, how can I save Israel? My family is the weakest and I am the weakest in my family. He was basically saying, God, are you sure you have the right guy? And we do the same thing. God tells us to do something and we think, God, are you sure you have the right person? You know, we think we're too weak to do what God wants us to do. But when we say, God, are you sure you can use me? You know what God says? He says, I will be with you. God says, I will be with you. So on the count of three, I want you to say that. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. God says, I will be with you. And that's what he said to Gideon, and that's what he says to us. You don't have to worry. When God tells you to do something that doesn't make sense, that he is asking you to do, he's not asking you to do it by yourself. He will be with you. Isn't that awesome? He'll always be with you, whatever you do. And still, guess what? Sometimes that isn't enough for us. We don't focus on how big God is. Instead, we focus on how big the enemy is. And when God doesn't make sense, I say, God, the enemy is too big. So on the count of three, I want you to say that. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. I say, God, the enemy is too big. Gideon thought the enemy was big. And you know what? It was big. And we look at our problems and think, oh my word, they are big. And they are. But God says something to us when we say, God, the enemy is big. He says to us, I am bigger. So on the count of three, I want you to say that in your loudest voice. Are you ready? One, two, three. God says I am bigger. That's what God was trying to get through to Gideon. Gideon didn't need 32,000 men. He didn't need 10,000 men. I don't even think he even had to have 300 men. And God is big enough to handle our enemy all by himself. Our enemy is big, but God is bigger. And God is bigger than your fear. He's bigger than the bully at school. He's bigger than sickness. He's bigger than COVID-19. And the enemy may be big, but you know what? God is bigger. Never forget that. And there's one final lesson that we need to learn from this Bible story. You see, when God doesn't make sense, I say, God, this doesn't make sense. Can you say that just like that with me on the count of three? One, 
two, three. I say, God, this doesn't make sense. Remember how God told Gideon to use a jar, a trumpet, doo -doo -doo, and a candle? These were his weapons against the enemy. <laughs> how are you supposed to fight a battle with jars, candles, and trumpets? And was he supposed to play a tune on the, tr the trumpet in order to entertain? Do, 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 do. Was he supposed to do that? <laughs> and he thought it was crazy. And Gideon thought it was crazy. Probably his men thought it was crazy. And he didn't think it made any sense at all. And it's interesting that we try to make sense of God's plans. And we're only using our tiny human brains. But God is the source of all the wisdom in the universe. And he's been around since the earth was created and before even time began. In Genesis, the Bible says that God hovered over the expanse of the earth. So he's been here all the time. And when God's plans don't make sense, we need to remember, you ready for this? That God says, I am God. I am God. So on the count of three, I want you to say that. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. God said, I am God. <laughs> God's ways may not make sense to us. They won't, not all the time. But he is the all powerful God who created the world, who created you. He knows the future. He doesn't have to work the way we think he should work. He's God. So when God tells you to do something that doesn't make sense, do just like Gideon did and say, you know what, God, I don't get it. And that's okay, but I'm going to obey anyway. And I remember when I was 30 years old, I'm old now, that was a long time ago, and I was teaching. And I remember the day that God told me that he wanted me to become a children's pastor. And to me, that didn't make any sense. I'm like, I'm already in a job. I'm, I've been in this job for a while, but you want me to do what? You want me to leave everything I'm used to and, and be a children's pastor? And it didn't make sense to me. But you know what? I told him I would do it and I obeyed what he told me to do. And it's amazing what happens when we obey what he tells us to do. All these doors start opening and it makes sense. And I can look back on that time and be like, oh, wow. You know, that really made sense to me. Okay, and so maybe in the moment we think to ourselves, I don't, I don't know what you're asking me to do. I'm scared, I don't wanna do it. But then later on when we look back and we can see things that led up to it and we can think, okay, you know what? I know God wanted me to do that and I can see how he paved the way for me to do it. So just like Gideon, when he was like, get rid of all my men and we're gonna go fight these men, like what's gonna happen? <laughs> are you crazy? How are we gonna defeat this army? And God says, I'm God. Sit back and watch what I'm gonna do. And so kids, today, that's what I want you to get a hold of. God is bigger than anything you face and he is gonna ask you to do crazy things. Maybe he wants you to go witness to the kid down the street whose parents are atheists and don't believe anything about God. And you're thinking to yourself, mm -mm, I don't wanna do that. And God says, oh yes, I want you to, you can do it. I've given you the Holy Spirit who's come upon you to empower you to do it and you can do it. So I want you to remember that when you feel a little stirring in your heart and God is telling you to do something and you think, I don't want to do that. Yes, you do. Because God's going to be with you and he's going to give you the strength, the courage, and the power to do it. So maybe there's something that God is asking you to do now and you just say, I don't understand God. I don't think I can do it. I want you to remember that God is bigger than anything you face. He's going to be with you and he is God. And remember that God has given you the Holy Spirit to give you power, to give you courage, and he's gonna walk you through it. So I'm gonna pray with you, and I'm gonna ask that your hearts would be open to do whatever God asks you to do, even when it seems crazy. You can do it because God is with you. Okay, would you pray with me today? God, we thank you so much for everything that we can learn from reading the Bible, your word to us. And I just pray for all the kids who are listening out there and God, you're going to call them to do crazy, crazy things, but they're going to be things that impact the kingdom of God. And so I pray right now that you would just put your hand upon each of them. God, you would stir in their hearts 
a desire and a passion to live for you. God, I pray your Holy Spirit would come upon each of these kids. God, that they would receive power to do what you ask them to do. They wouldn't be scared. They would have courage. Jesus, I thank you for what a wonderful God you are, that even when we don't think you make sense, you do. And we thank you that you know everything and that you are in control and nothing takes you by surprise. God, we love you and we just commit the rest of our time here with you today. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, I love you guys and are you ready to sing Counting on God? Hello everybody, happy Sunday. You know what time it is, let's all stand up and we're gonna worship. lesson today. I always love to read the Bible and hear stories that are like 
That did make sense. But can you just imagine defeating an army with a jar, a candle, and a trumpet? Doesn't make sense. But Gideon obeyed God and God took care of him. So remember that as you go about your week today, even with everything that we're going through, with the coronavirus, not being in school, not being able to see our friends, God is bigger than all of that and didn't take him by surprise. And what can we do in this situation to bring glory to God? Are you doing your devotions every day? Are you drawing close to him? Are you spending time with your parents, maybe playing more games? God has a plan for this time that we're in. And I want you to remember that this week, okay? And I want you to just thank God for everything that he's done for you, everything that you have that he has blessed you with. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. I love you and I can't wait for us to be able to meet again.